With the success of the GR Yaris worldwide, North American fans have been waiting for their turn at a flickable all-wheel drive hot hatch from Toyota. Luckily, we might not have to wait too much longer as rumors continue to build for a GR Corolla. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're discussing all things GR Corolla with a very special guest, David Chow. David's been in the auto industry for over three decades as an engineer and consultant for many automakers, including Toyota. You can find David's content over automotivepress.com. He also has a YouTube channel that's growing really, really fast. David, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Pretty good, Kirk. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here with you on your channel. Yeah, it's it's a, it's definitely an honor. It's a pleasure. And uh, I'm so excited for, for your channel. It's growing so fast. People are starving for the knowledge that you have. This specific engineering and production side of things is just so good. And thank you for sharing that with the community. So, oh no, thank you, Kirk. We both share the same passion and vision for all things to do with Japan and Toyota and other stuff. So, I'm just excited we both have the same vision and that we're here to uh, hopefully educate and entertain others on the YouTube channel. So, yeah, we're both on the same page, I think, Kirk. Yep, absolutely. So, people are here to learn more about the potentiality of this hot hatch, this GR Corolla. But before we get into that, where did GR come from? What's Gazoo Racing? Can you give us, fill us in a little bit about its really, really brief history? Sure, sounds good. So a couple of interesting things about Gazoo Racing. So first of all, the word Gazoo came from the Japanese word uh, Gazo. So it's actually pronounced Gazo and not Gazoo. But in Japanese, uh, when they um, they use an English uh, alphabet to make something long, you have to put two O's instead of one O. That's how the original award came from. So it's actually pronounced Gazo. Now that everyone pronounces it Gazoo, I think that's what they use in Japan too. The actual um, the pronunciation is Gazo, but it's pronounced Gazoo for the rest of us. And so that started back in 2007 with, uh, it was just a little, literally like a skunk works by the racing team um, spearheaded by, of course, none other than uh, Akio Toyota, who was involved with um, uh, education and coaching from one of the race car drivers who eventually passed away. And so when he was involved as a, as a vice president back then, he was really taken back by how Gazoo Racing or the racing theme in general could uh, give a whole flavor to Toyota. So as you already know, he is absolutely uh, really involved with racing and he's uh, very much loves race to race. So. Uh, when he took over eventually as a president, he, I think, decided that Gazoo Racing will become a mainstream theme. And so that's how the Gazoo Racing became part of the lineup. But um, but the confusing part is, of course, we still have TRD over here, which is also uh, representing racing of some sort or the racing development. And then yet we have the GR or Gazoo Racing. And then to add even more confusion, in Japan, there is a GR, there's GR Sport or GRS. And then there's also GRMN. And so, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on here? And that's that's probably what's confusing. But all I can say for now is that Toyota is going to slowly rebrand all sports cars and all performance cars with GR brand versus TRD. I think TRD will stay as the off-road uh, capable brand for trucks, uh, but uh, any, everything else to do with sports cars will become a GR mm -hmm. brand. Yeah, we talked about this at length the other night and TRD is really just available left in North America as a, I guess, a higher trim level, a more off-roading level. Uh, but it, it's a little confusing. Sometimes we've seen it on the 8.6, but that's already been transformed to the GR86 with the newest iteration. TRD won't be coming to like the Hilux, for example, because that's already been getting GR Sport trims for a while now. And I think it also has like an invincible trim, which is a top of the line as well. So yeah, it's, it's a little confusing, but you definitely helped clear it up <laughs> uh, to compare TRD versus Kazoo Racing, Kazoo Racing more so for the cars and more of a global branding where TRD is more specific to the trucks or the body and frame vehicles here in North America. The other thing, Kirk, yeah. by the way, for the, in Japan, the Kazoo Racing brand is quite wide. Like if you go to their Japanese website, uh, there's actually like a Toyota Prius GR. There is mm -hmm. a little minivan called the Voxy that also has a GR brand. So it's quite a huge lineup of all GR branded things. So it doesn't uh, necessarily mean just because you have a GR brand doesn't mean it's truly performance minded. Yeah. Um, so there is a big separation between the true GR and then the GRS or GR Sports yeah. stuff. And do you think a little bit 
of that was Akio sticking to never making boring cars. He wants to make exciting cars. And even if it's just a trim level to put on an Aqua or a Prius C to get a little bit more excitement out of it, it's worth it. Do you think that's kind of where he's thinking? So with uh, so Akio Toyota, who uh, of course has passion for anything to do with performance cars, um, is, uh, you know, most people know he's the grandson of the founder. Now, I've been very fortunate. I've met Akio about uh, 12 times. I've had lunch with him, breakfast with him. And and, you know, his passion comes through even in person. Um, but he wants to really rebrand Toyota as a performance-oriented brand, as a as a holistic approach, not not to become like a Porsche of the world. But he doesn't want to uh, have Toyota as a kind of you know very bland and generic Japanese models. He wants to have give it give it a bit of a flavor and a character, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, his idea was to create not just a Gazoo Racing brand, but to apply that to as many of the models as possible, so that each lineup, each major lineup, has uh, the additional sports variant, much like mm -hmm. Audi S line or BMW M M M models and so forth. Mm -hmm. Maybe not quite to that level, but so that's I think his idea is to give everything a bit of a sports flavor. Absolutely, and we we see it in the Lexus lineup too. I mean, Lexus. Lexus's designs are so much different than they were a decade ago. Cutting edge, I would say, and they definitely embody more of a, a sporty look from the top to the bottom. Even the LX has a has a, a package on it where you can get a more sporty uh, ground effects and a grill, et cetera. So I think we need to get into GR Parola now. Um, GR Yaris has been just a worldwide hit this past year around the world, and we have been salivating it over it here in the United States. Mexico got a handful of them. They sold out within a day. Uh, that's the closest we've seen this vehicle come here. And uh, looking at a couple references here, Toyota Gazoo Racing over at their website, they have a GR Hot Hatch page dedicated to a vehicle. Now, the image is a GR Yaris, but if you scroll down, they say, well, the GR Yaris isn't coming to the United States. They say, perhaps it's time the US got a Toyota Hot Hatch to call its own. And then again, if we go to Twitter here, while the GR Yaris isn't hitting the States, perhaps it's the time the US got a hot hatch to call its own. So they're broadcasting this out there and the rumors, the speculation is to take the Corolla and fuse it with a little bit of this GR uh, Yaris madness. And that's what we're gonna talk about in depth today on what it could be. First and foremost, what do you think the timing is going to be. We want, I mean, everyone's got, it seems like everyone's got the GR Yaris. When would we be most likely to get this GR Corolla? Right. So, uh, you know, all things to do with future cars, uh, we tend to refer to Best Car Magazine from Japan. And uh, they are not always correct, but they tend to be more accurate than the rest of the folks that, out there. So um, I have the, um, I think, Kirk, you have a copy of that too. I sent uh, mm -hmm. the latest yeah, uh, article. Yep. So that's the latest article on the GR uh, Corolla from Best Car Magazine. And so what they're saying is a couple of things. One is that it was supposed to be um, introduced this year. In fact, they're, they're saying that GR Corolla uh, started being developed before the GR Yaris. But due to the, um, you know, all kinds of stuff, pandemic and chip shortage and so forth, they had to push it, push it back. And so the best guess right now is at least for domestic market in Japan, the GR Corolla should come out summer of 2022. So I would assume that we will get it the fall of 2022 and that we will at least see a preview sometime in the summertime. So that's the timing for the GR Corolla. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say preview of the summertime, do you mean 2021 summertime or next summer? Oh, sorry, 2022 summer for, okay. 2020, for 2023 model year. Okay, so we're, we're a little over a year out from it hitting Japan first. Is Toyota going to make this a global model as well, do you think? Uh, so they are saying that it will be marketed in Asia as well as in North America. So I, yeah, I think it will be a global market. And maybe just like the GR86, maybe they'll introduce it in the Japanese market first with a full preview and the press conference. You know, who knows, maybe in spring mm -hmm. of next year. Uh, and then we would eventually see it. Like I found it really strange that when they did the GR86 reveal, it was 100% in Japanese, right? 
I've never seen that from Toyota. Right. Even though it's even though it's a model that we're going to get here in North America, they chose to introduce both the Subaru BRZ and the GR86 completely in Japanese. It's, I think so. Something similar could happen. They could introduce the Japanese version in spring next year in uh, sort of for Japanese reveal, mm -hmm. and then a few months later we'll probably get the official reveal here. All right. So we're about a year and a half away. Okay. So we know the GR Yaris has the 1.6 liter three-cylinder turbocharged engine. It's got a sophisticated all-wheel drive system. It's got a carbon fiber roof. It's got aluminum panels. It's really lightweight for what it is. It's a very specifically built vehicle. It's a replica in a lot of ways as the rally car. This Corolla, I'm expecting them to <laughs> not take such drastic me measures. Where do you think it's going to differ from the GR Yaris? And how much will the performance be different as well? Sure. Good question. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, all the things that we really want to know about the GR Corolla uh, because we're all excited about the GR Yaris and how much of that would, would, would carry over to the Corolla version. So a couple of things. One is that, uh, as you already know, the GR Yaris had a very specific purpose and that's to serve the need or the wants of the rally racing. And so that's why it has all these expensive components such as the carbon fiber roof and so forth and crazy, crazy engine and uh, a true remarkable all-wheel drive system. So some of that will carry over to the GR Corolla, but GR Corolla has a different purpose. And uh, as you know, Toyota is very much a business company more so than R&D company. And so they're, they're, you know, they won't introduce anything that won't sell. That's the whole point, and which is why we don't have FJ Cruiser anymore. And so GR Corolla is more road friendly, more highway friendly, more city friendly. It's not really meant for uh, something like a rally racing, obviously. And so it um, appeals to more larger mass market. Uh, but I have heard from multiple sources that they are going to carry the same engine from the GR Yaris. So same 1.6 liter, three cylinder turbocharged engine. Uh, and uh, but they're going to upgrade it slightly because the Corolla is heavier, and so uh, it's I, th I think it's upwards of about 10% more power than the GR Yaris is what I'm hearing. So I think the GR Yaris is a neighborhood of about 270 or 80 horsepower in the metric metric rating PS we call it, but it's about uh, 300 PS for GR Corolla is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, roughly 10% more, but I, I also understand the torque is exactly the same as the Yaris. Oh, and then, okay. all, yeah, and so it's just a little bit, maybe a little bit more power to compensate for larger body and larger, uh, heavier weight. And, but also same all-wheel drive system. So it's supposed to carry okay. over the GR Yaris system. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, still same uh, manual transmission is going to be the same as well with uh, automatic transmission to be introduced about two years later. And so that's still coming which isn't the case with GR Yaris. And I think it will still be built also at the same factory in Motomachi in Japan. Yeah, we talked about where it would be built. It's it's still a question mark. More than likely, Motomachi is what we decided upon um, at the GR factory. You know, I, th I think it, it makes the most sense. Why why dedicate a part of the Motomachi plant to performance if you're just going to make one model there? So if it's going to be using a lot of the same parts as the GR Yaris, it makes the most sense for it to be built alongside of it or to succeed it. Um, do you think the GR Yaris will be produced for much longer? Well, I, I think, again, Toyota being a business company, as long as there's the demand, I think they'll continue to produce it for a little longer. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting, though, once the GR Corolla comes out, would they, you know, phase away the GR Yaris? I'm not, that's a good question. I'm not sure about that one. I'll bet mm -hmm. even to Toyota doesn't know. I'll bet they're going to wait and see how the GR Corolla takes off. So back to, do you want me to talk about the factory a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. You've been to Motomachi many, many times. So uh, enlighten. I think most people know that I'm from Japan. So I go to Japan usually before the pandemic days, two or three times a year. So I go to Motomachi almost every trip that I'm there. So I've been there, I don't know, 50 times or so. But the Motomachi factory is divided into many different sections. It's a huge complex. And so there is a section for normal production of cars like the... Um, I think Toyota Crown or Toyota Majesta is still produced there. Yeah, um, the but, Lexus uh, LC we talked about as well. The LC is made there. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So that's so they have the regular production section and they have a more of a specialty or a low volume manufacturing section, which is the Lexus. 
uh, Lexus, what they call a Lexus production center. Mm -hmm. And then there is a new section called the GR section, which is for really low volume handcrafted uh, production. It's a very different type of system. So in the mass production, you actually have literally like a conveyor belt and cars are being pulled uh, with what we call tack time, which is uh, a heartbeat of the production, which is every minute mm -hmm. a car comes off the assembly line, for example. But in the GR factory, it's mostly hand built with some machining and some automation. Um, but uh, most of the work is really literally done by uh, Takumi specialists. Takumi specialists are Japanese Toyota engineers and production workers with the highest caliber of talent and experience. So Takumi means like artisan or craftsmanship. And so these are the ones that's building the GR Yaris and they will be building the GR Corolla. So really a super high caliber of production and but in a different section of the Motomaji factory than the rest of the production. Do you think there are any chances is that the Takumi that had their hands on the LFA production could be also creating the GR Yaris and possibly this GR Corolla? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the Takumi specialists, there aren't that many. I don't know the exact number. I would say less than less than 2025, 20, maybe at the moment. That's it. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's not that many Takumi. Like there's different levels of Takumi specialists. And the highest one with the most experience would have built the Lexus uh, LFA and then the LC, of course. But um, so there's a junior, junior Takumis and there's a senior Takumis, but <laughs> there's probably no more than a couple of dozens of them. So, and they would, they are co-located. So they're going to share all of their expertise and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I am sure that some of the high performance uh, Takumis are actually working on the GR Yaris and the Corolla as well. And I remember you saying in your visiting of Motomachi, you don't, you typically don't see them. They're kind of like behind the curtain. They're in a, uh, a private portion of the factory, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of these days, maybe I'll go to Japan with you, Kirk, and I'll introduce you to some of these Takumi guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're, you know, honestly, they're super humble and down to earth. And, you know, they'll be eating lunch in the Toyota cafeteria like any other people. And yet they're <laughs> some of the best builders in the world. Right. And you just can't, they just look like any other ordinary Japanese um, production team leaders, right? So, yeah. and they're super humble. If you ask them, hey, you are the Takumi of the Takumis, they're just saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I just like to build cars, right? That's the type of attitude they have. So yeah. um, they're, they're legends. Fascinated. They're definitely they're legends. legends. Yeah. I almost see them as like the saints, the saints of Toyota, <laughs> you know, That's they right. go down yeah. in the history books. All right. So we've talked about what carries over from the GR Yaris, what doesn't. You mentioned automatic transmission and automatics are, I mean, they're taking over the world, just like electric cars are going to slowly take over the world, sadly. But manual transmission is confirmed. Automatic transmission in Japan, they have uh, an RS version or variant of the GR Yaris. It looks like a GR Yaris from the outside, but un underneath the engine, there is a one and a half liter three cylinder that they take from the normal Yaris and it's front wheel drive and it has the direct shift CVT. Do you think that a full blown all wheel drive turbocharged GR Corolla would receive the direct shift CVT, or do you think it would be more like uh, an eight speed auto or, or something like that? Right. So, you know, well, I, I, as a general conversation, I think one of the challenge that we have is that whatever they end up doing for GR Corolla, uh, the full version, I mean, that might not be the version that we get here in North America. So unfortunately, sometimes we get the watered down version here, right? Because it's, they need to keep the price a little bit lower and maybe the volume has to be higher. So they want to you know, kind of mass market or mass appeal as opposed to going to really, really fine tune to a very niche market. So it's a good question that um, whatever they end up introducing next year for GR Curl, the high performance version might not be what we get. And so, um, as you mentioned, the GR Yaris now, they are going to have a lower output version with a normal engine and so forth for Japan. And so maybe the same story might carry over and we might get a, a slightly detuned version with a normal engine, aspirated engine with a, uh, regular transmission over here in North America as well. We hope that's not the case. <laughs> I think if you read through the press release from Toyota, it, they're promising something amazing and great like the GR Yaris. So, 
you think that they won't do that. But again, that part, I guess we both don't know yet. We will we'll have right. to wait wait to find out. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get a CVT as our op, our automatic transmission. Yeah, I'm really hoping that the GR Corolla we get here is not going to be just like a cosmetic upgrade with some suspension tuning and I hope not. Um, but no. we'll have to wait and see. Man, the the fan base here in America would go to the streets and start breaking th through <laughs> places and, and yeah. uh, burning cars if, if we don't get a high performance GR Corolla after all this teasing from them. I'm going to move to I'm going to move to Japan and by the GIRs if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's fine. You can speak Japanese, so you'll be fine. Speaking of pricing now, if the GR Yaris was available here, what do you think it would be? And how much different do you think the GR Corolla will be from that? So before I answer that question, do you know Go the ahead. pricing for like the Volkswagen Golf GTI pricing? It's going to be around so that level. If I if I pull Golf, up um, I'm sorry, my Golf spreadsheet, R, Golf R, yeah, yeah, the Golf R is like over forty four thousand dollars. Yeah, um, the GTI is uh, starts around thirty. The Veloster N is thirty two. The Civic Type R is thirty seven. That might be right. kind of a more of a direct. It's competitor. probably around that price. Yeah. So I think the GR Yaris, if it was sold here, would be around uh, about forty thousand dollars. But they're saying okay. GR Corolla is going to be more expensive than that. So, so uh, yeah, the pricing, of course, is a little bit uh, peculiar because uh, different country, different regions have their own system for pricing the cars. But uh, I think uh, if the GR Yaris was available here, I would think that it would be priced very close close to Volkswagen Golf R or to um, Honda Civic Type R. So kind of. Thirty-eight to forty-two thousand dollar range. So let's say forty thousand US would be my best guess if the GR Yaris was made available. And then so uh, then that begs the question: What about the GR Corolla? Well, according to Best Car Magazine, they say it's going to be more expensive than the GR Yaris, which is a bit surprising to me. But uh, it's also a bigger car, right? And so it could be another ten percent beyond that. So GR Corolla could be a forty-five thousand dollar car if it's the total high performance version. But if that's the case, I don't know if they're going to buy at that price range. So that's why there is yeah. still a good, yeah, sorry. So that's why I still think that they might have a slightly watered down version at the thirty-six dollars to $37,000 price range to go with a Civic Type R. A lot hard to okay. say. Yeah. If it costs more than the GR Yaris and the respective markets that both of them are sold, that is that is tough. I know it's a bigger car, but the GR Yaris has so many expensive pieces on it, all the lightweight aluminum, uh, probably lighter wheels. You have the carbon fiber roof. That can't be cheap to make and cheap, put on the yeah. vehicle. And the vehicle is completely bespoke. It's it's a mix between a TNGA B and C platform where the Corolla, in theory, they shouldn't have to change too much to it. Uh, we know that that platform can help have all-wheel drive, the C, the C platform, because the, the CHR has all-wheel drive, a mechanical all-wheel drive in certain markets. So, man, that would be a tough pill to swallow if it is over 40k i mean i wouldn't be surprised if toyota does still all quite a bit of them i was hoping and again we're it's all speculation but man i really hope it can come in around uh 37k to compete against a type r but if if we're pushing uh low to mid 40s for a golf r sort of pricing and the golf r in theory has uh more power more torque it's going to be faster. Man, uh, that, that's that's tough. That's tough for me to get my head around. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think all, it all comes down to whether uh, they're going to go after the, the top end of that market, you know, Golf R or even higher, um, even going after the uh, Mercedes AMG's models, or right. are they going to go after the slightly lower end, the GTI, Volkswagen GTI lineup and slash Civic Type R levels. So who knows? I guess we'll find out. It's kind of interesting because lately Toyota's strategy seems to be a little bit all over the place in terms of, um, you know, do they want to go after a sort of higher market segment or more high volume? And I think what they're doing is testing a wide range of variation to see which one hits the market well. And then, uh, and then they're going to put more effort into that particular type of model or market that is selling. So 
Uh, anyway, that just tells us that we don't know yet what's going to happen with the Corolla. Right. If it comes to America late next year, what are you looking forward to the most about this GR Corolla? Well, I think the most exciting thing is the fact that we're going to get something at least remotely close to GR Yaris, which has rave reviews everywhere. And it's our closest, uh, closest thing to owning a GR Yaris. So I'm really excited about that. I have a, a GR Supra. That's my uh, day, sort of not to day to day car, but my weekend car. And so I really love that car, but it's super uh, impractical. I can't carry stuff and you know, I can't really use it in the winter time. So clearly if, uh, if the GR Corolla came out as a true performance model, I'm gonna trade in my Supra for the GR Corolla. But there's no question about oh, wow. that one. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna do that for sure. Yeah, and you also mentioned you're thinking about trading in your TRD Tacoma, correct? That's what you have, uh, the yes. Lunar Rock one for right. possibly a brand new <laughs> Tundra, and we should be seeing the Tundra pretty soon, <laughs> which I'm going to use that kind of as a segue into the closing of today's video. All right, David, so we pretty much finalized or summarized everything about the GR Corolla, when it's coming, what it's going to be, how much it's going to be, et cetera, at least what we think it's going to be. And we've talked about so many other things together over on the phone about Toyota, about Lexus, and there's a lot more videos coming more than likely from us in the future. We're not ready to talk about what exactly those topics are gonna be, but we'd love to get you guys involved down below. What would you guys like to see from David's experience and expertise, as well as, I don't know, my passion and enthusiasm? What would you like to see us cover together. David, I guess if you want to say your your final thoughts and your goodbye, go ahead and do that. Well, first of all, thank you, Kirk, for inviting me on your channel. Again, I keep on uh, reiterating that we both share the same passion mm -hmm. for all things to do with uh, Japanese and Asian products. And we are here to share as much information and insight as possible. Uh, we're basically crazy about cars, right? So, yep. and, tr and trucks, of course. So uh, whatever the viewer viewers want, we would love to continue sharing those information. And I think uh, with Kirk's uh, knowledge and my insight, we make a good a good team here. So hopefully we can share more interesting stuff for everyone. And, uh, but we want to know what you want to know. So let us, uh, uh, let us know through the comments and uh, we'll do more videos together. Absolutely. David, again, thank you so much. And I can't wait to show up on your channel as, as we do something similar to this. So thank you yes. so much. We'll catch up soon. Guys, make sure to smash the like button if you haven't. Subscribe and head over. I'll put uh, David's links uh, in the description below so you can head to his website and his YouTube channel as well. Make sure to subscribe to his great work. We'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. Great. Thank you, everyone.